as I said, nothing ever goes away. Mechanical energy. Well, you know that Me is equal to the sum of the potential and kinetic energy in a system. Energy, which is where? Where? Maximum potential energy exists where? At the max. At the yeah. At the at the top of the cycle and at the bottom of the cycle. Where does the maximum kinetic energy exist? In the equilibrium position, because that's where your velocity is at a maximum. Okay. All right, well, so let's think about this. At this top of cycle, it's got a lot of gravitational potential energy. It doesn't have any kinetic energy because what does velocity go to at top of cycle? Zero. Zero. It zeroes out for a second. Every centimeter that it travels, what's happening to its potential energy due to gravity? It's doing what? It's decreasing. What's happening to its kinetic energy? Increasing. And then once we pass equilibrium, what's happening to its kinetic energy? Decreasing. Decreasing what's happening to its elastic potential energy? Decreasing. Increasing. So we can draw a really pretty picture. And I think I have it in here. Nope, I don't. We can draw a beautiful picture that shows um, time. And we, have, we can have two lines. So here's our potential energy, and we can, we can say this is due to gravity and elastic, and as we travel down towards equilibrium, potential energy decreases, and then potential energy increases again due to spring, so this would be the potential energy. When we're at top of cycle, the kinetic energy is zero. As we go to equilibrium, it peaks, and as we come back to bottom of cycle, it does that. So we, we end up with this exchange of potential and kinetic energy again and again and again. This happens at a roller coaster. So at the top of the first hill, you've got lots of what? Potential energy. You don't have a whole lot of kinetic energy. At the bottom of the first hill, you now have a significant amount of kinetic, not a whole lot of potential left at that point but you've got enough momentum to carry you to the next hill. Okay, so they trade back and forth again and again and again. Somewhere in here, I do have a nice graphic of that. And we, we didn't talk about the, um, the helical torsion springs, the mousetrap springs, but we will. So in any spring system, we're storing the elastic potential in the spring or in the material that's being deformed bungee cord, metal spring, um, piece of, who can name, okay, who can name me an elastic potential energy storage system that is not a traditional spring or like a, a rubberized elastic, like a rubber band or a bungee cord? Who can name me one? Justin, you'd be my most likely candidate for this. What? Justin or Joe. Can you repeat the question? Yeah. Name me something that stores elastic potential energy that is not a traditional coiled spring or an elastic such as a rubber band or a bungee cord. I don't know. Nothing. Oh, yeah. And Justin's actually probably our better bet. Uh -huh. So it's on what construction? So trucks typically don't have you. It's it's hard to make a big enough spring to support leaf springs. Yeah, what's a leaf spring, Justin? Describe it. Okay. I don't know. Mine snapped. I had one snap too. Okay. You know, it's just like that. Okay, that was not real descriptive. <laughs> okay, so a leaf spring is a piece of steel. It's a piece of steel that is bent. It looks like a bow for 
or a bow and arrow. There's another one. A bow. How many of you have ever used a bow? Any bow hunters in here? Okay. Is there elastic potential energy stored in that bow? Yes, that's why it snaps back. That's also not a traditional coiled spring, nor is it an elastic. So those are also ways to store elastic potential energy. In any system that approximates a spring, in the case of the leaf spring, we call it a spring, even though it's just a curved piece of metal. But it's storing elastic potential energy. In the case of a bow, that bow is functioning as a spring. Okay. Kinetic energy, once that thing is in motion, is going to equal the potential energy that was stored in it. Minus what? Minus what? <clears throat> so, once we set this thing in motion, or we set a mousetrap bar in motion, or we, we bounce a truck down the road, or we pull back the bow and let it go, the kinetic energy of that thing in motion is going to be equal to the potential energy that was stored minus what? Too easy. Minus what? Well, minus losses due to heat and sound. And occasionally light, but really more heat and sound. So Hayden's question about, you know, wouldn't the spring eventually wear out because the metal would just, you know, you bend a paper clip back and forth enough times, what happens? It breaks. Wouldn't it eventually break? When you bend that paper clip back and forth, what's true about the end of the paper clip? When you bend a paper clip back and forth until it breaks, what's true about that end of the paper clip? It's hot. So the losses due to heat are those losses of wear on the internal side of the material. So internal, internal frictions generate that heat, and so we do have some losses due to heat. Okay. Pendulums. Now we're going to switch our focus from our, our spring systems. We're going to get our spring out of the way. And we're going to start to talk about pendula. So we've got all of our little pendulum Bob's occupied here. Uh, yeah, I'm going to move that. Thanks. Yeah, that would not be would not be a wonderful idea. It would be disastrous. I guess it's funny to look at again. Graduated cylinder. Okay, so when we talk about pendula, this is the plural of pendulums, we talk about them as if all the mass is at the bob. The bob is the thing that hangs on the end here. And the string has no mass. So we kind of idealize them as we do with many things. And there's our pendula. Okay. Why, except for variations due to some swing off a path, why do they travel over that same path? Hmm? Mm -hmm. Why do they travel over the same path? 